Hi everybody, my name is Brandon Winchester and I'm an anesthesiologist at the Andrews Institute in Gulf Breeze, Florida. I'm also the co-founder of the regional anesthesia education website, blockjocks.com. Now, we've made a lot of videos for our website over the last several years and primarily we've used our video conferencing and, and live uh, video streaming and recording system called the Dock in the Box, a multi-camera system with two HD video cameras and an ultrasound feed uh, to use a multi-camera uh, video recording setup. Uh, today we're going to record a video, but instead of using our usual Dock in the Box video recording system, instead we're going to use the Google Glass uh, that is uh, basically one of the latest technology advances uh, in, uh, in the world of telemedicine. Now, what is Google Glass? Well, it's an innovative technology. It's a wearable multimedia technology uh, that basically has several features. It has a HD video camera built into the rim of the glasses. Uh, in addition, it has sort of a cube-like transparent uh, screen, display screen, in the upper outer uh, right eye visual field uh, of the person wearing the glasses that can display various things. And uh, so what can you do with it? You can live video conference using a Google Hangout. Uh, you can get turn-by-turn -turn GPS directions uh, in your little display screen in the upper right of your, of your visual field while you're, while you're driving. Uh, you can record HD video uh, using the HD video camera that's built in, which gives you sort of a point of view uh, video recording. Uh, and so what we're going to do today uh, is film a nerve block procedure, a ultrasound guided interscaling nerve block catheter uh, for a right shoulder surgery uh, that's going to enhance this patient's uh, optimization of his pain control after the surgery. Uh, and I think this is an excellent use uh, among many potential options for the Google Glass uh, of a telemedicine application, a use of multimedia video technology to teach and improve healthcare overall. So. Go ahead and put my Google Glass on, and uh, let's give it a shot and see how it goes. Catheter tray here to the left. You can see our patient is in the left lateral decubitus position with the surgical side up. Go ahead and get started by putting our stroke gloves on. First thing you're going to feel is me cleaning off your shoulder area with some cleaning solution. You got the clear plastic drape and just based upon experience we'll place this very posterior and cranial well away from where we're going to scan with the ultrasound transducer. Yeah, our next step is to just go ahead and flush through the local anesthetic. And we'll place our needle ready and waiting. Get some sterile ultrasound gel. Just in case the sterile and the non-sterile fields get too close together, that sterile ultrasound gel gives me a little bit more peace of mind. So you can see we're just above the clavicle, we're rotating a little bit, and we're at the supraclavicular view. And what we're going to do is paintbrush up the neck to get to the interscaling view. So we'll start at the supraclavicular. Turn over room five, please. Turn over room five. Bottom right is a classic supraclavicular view. From about the five o'clock, excuse me, about the seven o'clock to the eleven o'clock positions, the supraclavicular trunks and divisions. So I'll slide my probe up the neck, look for what looks like a very classic stoplight sign there. The fifth and the sixth roots aligned very vertically. Very nice view there. So we'll get our finer needle here. You're gonna feel a big bee sting here, sir. Big pinch and a burn. One, two, three, pinch, and burn, make a nice big skin wheel. Put that back. And then place our needle. The same location as that skin wheel. Okay, we'll be coming in from 
left to right on the ultrasound screen. We have our nerve stimulator on in the event that we get a posterior twitch. That would indicate we're either coming into contact first with the long thoracic nerve or second with the dorsal scapular nerve. And as we know, we don't always see these with ultrasound. You see our needles coming in from left to right there. See a nice view of that. Okay, needle continues to advance. Haven't encountered any twitches yet. See the needle is right adjacent to the to the through right there. You feel a little bit of a pop as I get through the muscle. A lot of pressure now. Okay, looks like a, a little bit of a pop. Now I don't have a nerve twitch. As you can see here, it's not not every time that we get a muscle twitch when we get through that muscle because we're not in the sheath of the nerves. That being said, injecting between the muscle, the middle scaling muscle, uh, and the roots, the fifth and sixth roots, is uh, is okay at this point, provided that you got through that muscle. I'm going to go ahead and aspirate and inject five cc's. You can see the spread right along that posterior border of the nerves, creating a nice separation between the muscles, muscle and the nerves. So I'm just doing a little bit of paint brushing up and down the posterior border, very gently as the next five goes in. Aspirate and give five just to enhance the spread all on that posterior border. Yeah. And the last five for a total of 15 cc's. Okay, a total of 15 cc's are in. I'll go ahead and hand the probe over. And I'll disconnect my tubing from my needle. Prepare to thread our styleted, kink resistant Contiplex Echo catheter. And we'll prepare to try to do the Hickman flip maneuver. Now, because this catheter is styleted, we do have to be very careful that this doesn't flip itself off the sterile field. So you can see we've got the catheter looped through the needle and then back up and then pinched between my index finger and the needle. See that a little closer there? That keeps it from flying off the, the table. So I'll get the needle to the catheter to about 15, 14, 13, about 12 at the, at the hub here, at the thread assist guide hub, and that'll indicate that we're uh, just about to get out of the needle. Bevel's facing up. So we'll go ahead and visualize for the catheter flip. And Bogner's has the needle nicely visualized in plane. Catheter comes out, and I'll steepen my needle as I advance my catheter, and it sort of flips on itself. Now I'll try it again here. Steepen and advance, and the catheter flips again. That was a nice flip. Okay, so I guess I've got two flips in there. Now at this point, I don't really need the stylet. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that stylet out and toss it. And then as I retract my needle, I'm going to advance the catheter just a little bit more, a little faster than I'm than withdrawing the needle, just to give a little additional subcutaneous slack on the catheter. Now, we have our tray was already prepared for us, so there's very little additional things to open. I have my thread assist guide already ready for me. So I'll connect that up. Clamp it. Always give that a good tug, just in case it's not on there snugly. And if you look closely at the catheter, the markings there, are the 20 marking, 19, 18, 17. So we're about 16 or so at the skin. Notice there's a little bit of oozing at the skin, so to prepare for a little cleaner dressing, I'll preemptively just hold a 4x4 on the skin while I'm making this next step. Okay, so we've got our test dose here now, 3 cc's of 1.5% lidocaine with epinephrine. Connect up the test dose. And we'll aspirate gently. Let's see if there's no heme in the catheter. And then with direct visualization of the posterior border of the fifth and sixth roots, we'll look for spread on three. One, two, three. See a nice amount of spread. You can see the nerves pushing to the right. You can see kind of the bubbly 
hyperechoic nature of the bubbles of air, the half a cc air that was mixed in with that local. And we got a nice spread there. Still, so we'll take a picture just below that. And you see that vertical strip of air? Do you want to just point that out? Kind of that vertical strip of air. That's the, the, that's the appearance you want on that post-injection view, that catheter is laying along that posterior border of the plexus there. Okay, and we'll take a picture there. Okay, at this point I've been holding pressure on the insertion to keep it from being as, as messy when we put the dressing on. I'm going to disconnect the syringe. Recap the catheter and remove the drape so that we can put our dressing on. And while I'm removing it, before I pull it off, I'm going to have our black nurse go ahead and wipe off that sterile ultrasound gel that we were using. And then I'll pull this off and pass my catheter through, being careful to maintain sterility throughout this portion of the procedure. I'll take this drape and drop it. Okay, just to be thorough, we'll take the sterile remaining chlorhexidine. Just give a few wipes where that sterile ultrasound gel was, just to be borderline anal retentive about cleanliness. Okay, and now I've got our mastosol bullet. I'm pinch that and spread this mastosol to make it sticky nice and wide because all that ultrasound gel. Up here isn't going to make it very sticky. In the dressing, we want to make sure it sticks on real well. Next wide mastosol. I'll take our four by fours and I'll just fold them once or twice and just dab the area that we were just spreading the mastosol to make it stickier quicker. Okay, we can either take, at this point, to place our, uh, our, to spread our histocryl, either take our filter straw and sort of fold it on itself, create a little hockey stick, or just a simple, you can take the cap from a needle to help spread the histocryl. So I'm going to start with one little loop posterior on the catheter. And give that insertion one more dab just to get that residual heme dry. And this histocryl is going to seal this hole. So our nurse now has a sterile glove on and it's going to free fall a few drops of that histocryl onto the insertion site. We'll do about four drops or so. And I'll use the filter straw just to ensure that those drops go where they need to go. Okay, and this is the last of this histocryl, so we'll go ahead and just touch it to the skin. And okay. yeah, that's good. And we're done sealing that hole. And that sealant not only will keep it from oozing a little bit of heme, uh, but um, most importantly from day to day, it helps keep that local anesthetic from leaking out of the skin and getting the dressing wet, which can lead to catheter dislodgement. Okay, so look closely at our dressing here. At our catheter here, it's coming back, looping back. I'm gonna send another loop back in case it gets tugged on. And I'll loop it anteriorly. Now the surgeon's drape dressing is going to be simulated here by this tagoderm. Surgeon's eventual dressing is going to be kind of like that, kind of diagonally like that. So I want my dressing to be like that above it. Okay. Before I do anything with my dressing, I'm going to put a few steri strips on. I'm put two steri strips on parallel to that eventual dressing, right near the insertion site, but not occluding it. And then, if I were to use the big tagoderm in one direction, the cranial direction, I'd be competing with the hairline, so the hetagoderm would get too much in the hairline if I went too far that way. If I went too far this way, I'm competing with the surgeon's sterile field. So instead of using that big tagoderm, we use two of the little IV-type tagoderms. Put it right up adjacent to the insertion 
another centimeter and a half down towards the sterile field, the surgeon's dress, eventual dressing, and diagonally. And we'll put one on a little bit more of a posterior location. And we'll put another one side by side, overlapping next to that one. Okay, I'm done with that. Now you can see the jerked strip catheter is looped down. The tape is going to fold over on it. It'll keep the catheter from yanking out of the alligator clamp and uh, one less way to have a catheter dislodge. Well, that concludes this right-sided interscaling continuous catheter for a right shoulder surgery uh, recorded with Google Glass. Uh, best of my knowledge, I think this is the first time that Google Glass has been used to record a nerve block procedure, so that's kind of exciting. And uh, I'm very ex interested and excited to see how the footage turns out. So I hope that was very helpful, and uh, stay tuned for more blocks today on blockjocks.com.